Promises, promises, promises. As part of my executive oath for my second term, I stood on the east portico of the Capitol and delivered a speech that some say was memorable. Keep in mind I addressed a country bloodied and battered by civil war. There was hardly a family that didn't feel the pain of death, disease, or injury. That awful war separated families, often pitting brother against brother. At the time of my second inauguration, the war's end was only weeks away. As a nation, we needed to unite. In sharing the responsibility, both sides could begin the healing. With malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow and his orphan. That was the original promise, and it eventually became your promise too, our promise. After the war and after that scoundrel John Wilkes Booth put a bullet in my noggin, Union Civil War veterans formed what they called the Grand Army of the Republic, the GAR. It was a service organization formed in Decatur, Illinois. It had posts all over the country and had nearly a half a million members. Each post had a commander. States were organized as departments. They even had a ladies auxiliary and they did all kinds of good for our veterans. They were one of the first organized advocacy groups in American politics. They lobbied Congress for veterans' benefits, supported voting rights for black soldiers, promoted patriotic education, and helped make Memorial Day a national holiday. They called it Decoration Day at the time. I saw it happen. Just like I've admired your good deeds for nearly 100 years. Pretty good view from my perch in the clouds. The GAR dissolved by slow death when the last member passed away. It was an exclusive club limited to Civil War vets. And oh, they were a gritty, stubborn lot. They could have continued to do wonderful things to help veterans and their families from other wars. The Spanish-American War, World War I, even World War II. But those folks refused to change with the times. And, as one famous general you might remember once said, they just faded away. That's why I'm here, talking to you. I have a pretty unique perspective, you have to admit. I've witnessed a great deal from my favorite fluffy cloud. Some good, some bad, and some frustrating. One thing that I know from my front row seat, Organizations fade away when the muckety-mucks and members remain stubborn and resistant to change. Yes, Mary. Oh, I'll be home directly. My carriage is outside and the horses are already hitched up. Goodbye, dear. Looks like I'm in Dutch with the missus. Some things never change. But the American Legion Auxiliary, you, the members and leadership, understand that change and a keen eye to the future are necessary to continue your legacy of service. And you good folks have a plan to do it, the Centennial Plan. It's a roadmap for growth, increased service, your very survival as an organization. If you love the auxiliary, and I know you do, failure is not an option. Everybody needs to board the train. And I'll bet you a $5 bill that you can do it. I should have been on the 20. Now we all know adjusting to change takes time, effort, even consternation just like me in this thingamabobble. But I promise you, just like I promised the Civil War veterans in my speech over 150 years ago, that you can do it. You can continue the legacy. 
Now, I can't see into the future. I would know that this stovepipe hat is way out of style. But for an old country lawyer, I've learned a thing or two. Your country needs you. Veterans and all you serve need you. And you need each other. So keep the promise. My promise. Your promise. Our promise. Don't make me come back here.